Your bank just went under. Is your money safe? How do you even get your money? And what about your stock accounts, your investing accounts, your 401ks? Isn't that inside of an institution that you have no control over? So not only are you taking a risk on investing into assets like stocks, even bonds, which kind of started this whole YouTube video that you're watching right now because um, those interest rates are very high. But let's not get into the convoluted stuff. Let's dive straight into the point. How do you keep your money safe? safe at the bank? And how do you make sure your bank is keeping your money safe? And what about your investment portfolio? So I'm going to share my screen right now, and we're going to go over what is going on with the Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, first of all, if you're living under a rock, we have had one of the largest banks in the United States just shut down, right? So this is the Silicon Valley Bank. This is going to ripple into the economy within the next year, maybe months, maybe a couple of years, but this is going to have a huge impact on things that we know at the last time that this happened was 2008, which is what we refer to as the Great Recession. If you're watching this video, you probably already dropped a like and you joined the community by, um, you know, so clicking that subscribe button, but you also are prepared for things like this. You also are chasing a financially free lifestyle, a work optional lifestyle, and you cannot be prepared for it if all you're thinking about is what stocks should I buy? Where should I buy them? You have to think about diversification, not just across sectors like finances and tech, but you have to think about diversification across institutions. This is something that on this channel we talked about frequently in the past. And if you're following this video from Instagram, then you already know that this is a topic I love to cover, and we have been talking about this since 2018. So let's get into this Silicon Valley Bank. First of all, the customers are budged in the short term. Now, you thought that this was only a problem in the crypto world, right? Uh, this happens about once or twice a week when it comes to the cryptocurrency uh, firms that keep all of our crypto. Um, when it comes to banks, this is much more rare. Again, the last time this happened was 2018 and uh, or 2008. The problem here is, check this out. The FDIC does insure up to $250,000, a quarter of a million bucks. And in this case, in this case, they are protecting uh, customers up to $250,000. However, more than 97% of customers at this particular bank were institutions right meaning that these is this is a uh, company money and who the list of companies that have more than $250,000 here is huge let's check this out oh that guy looks pretty upset right there talking about uh all the money that he got locked in but uh companies like whoa this guy just follows us around companies like Roku had almost half a billion dollars in this in, inside of this bank. Uh, that's about a quarter of all of their cash. Is this going to impact their stock price? Probably, probably, maybe not, but probably. Circle, which is a crypto firm uh, behind the USDC token, of course, they have so much money here as well, $3.3 billion, but a majority of its money is spread across other institutions, which is what you should be doing too. Be thinking like a business when it comes to your money because money is business. Roblox, this is not looking good. 5% of its cash is also being held at this bank. However, they do say it'll have no impact, which is exactly what every crypto firm said when uh, we had the whole collapse of stable coins back in uh, 2021. What year are we in anyways? This seems like it's 1929 right now with this bank uh, uh, failing. Um, besides the point, these are just a list of companies that have a direct impact. Now, what is FDIC insurance? Let's check this out. This is Investopedia. It is a great free resource for you guys to check out. I get a lot of information from here. I love just spending, you know, 
five minutes every now and then scrolling through here, reading, learning something new, a new nuance of like 401ks or Roth IRAs, et cetera, et cetera. So what is the Federal Deposit Insurance uh, Corporation? First of all, it's not even federal. Okay, okay, we're not going to get into that. But it was created in 1933 uh, because 9,000 banks failed. Over 9,000 banks failed across the United States of America. They also, uh, per, back then, insured only twenty. $500. Now it's a quarter of a million dollars. And I believe um, that there were zero, zero times where did they not cuff, cough up the cash to its customers. So this is mostly for cash being held in your savings, in your checking, as well as any interest the banks pay you. And uh, most banks don't pay you. So make sure you're in a high um, yield savings account for your emergency funds. Now, this is great and all, but $250,000, this is a channel where everyone's hoping and already probably, maybe some of you already are millionaires in the high six figures, seven figures, or you will be in the future. And right now you have your first $5,000, $10,000, maybe even $100,000 as you are building towards your work optional lifestyles. Um, over here, this does help prevent bank run situations where a lot of customers go and pull their money out because they know there's no point to do that. Your money is safe up to 250K and this is paid out relatively quickly. I'm talking like a few days. Um, Every now and then, another bank will buy the failing bank, and all your funds will be transferred there, and you will have access relatively soon. I also want to add a little fun fact. CDs are a part of this. But what about stocks? Okay, so say you have a Weeble account or a Fidelity account or Charles Schwab, Vanguard. What happens if you have $3 million, say there, and all of a sudden the firm closes? Well, FDIC will pay everyone $0. That's right. You're not FDIC insured for your stocks, for your bonds, or anything like that. That's a too bad, so sad situation. Oh, wait, it's not? There's an insurance that um, brokerage firms buy? This is the SIPC, Securities Investor Protection Corporation. Usually, they protect up to $500,000 in assets. But that is a little bit misleading because they're not protecting a dollar amount. They're protecting a share amount. So say you have 50 shares of GameStop and 20 shares of AMC because you're a degenerate and you're investing in uh, some firm called XYZ to the moon uh, rocket ship. That firm goes under. Well, hopefully you read the fine print and they do have SIPC insurance. So all of your shares... Even if GameStop and AMC go to a dollar each or something, you know, like that, anything's possible. I'm not saying they will. I'm not saying they won't. Hopefully, they'll go to the moon and you will all retire earlier than I do. Uh, full disclosure, I do hold a few GameStop shares, a few AMC shares. I just wanted to say that, get that out there. I also um, do have a monthly subscription to GameStop and a monthly subscription to AMC. One of my few monthly subscriptions happened to be to the meme company the meme stocks. Um, however, your shares will be given back to you in a new brokerage or the brokerage that buys uh, the brokerage that you have that is failing. So that's something that I want you all to think about and how you're protected. Again, if you are aiming for a work optional lifestyle, probably you're aiming for high six figure or even seven figure net worths. And most of that will be invested into stocks. Um, the problem here is if you have a million bucks, a lot of these firms, M1 Finance, for example, aren't going to cover a million dollars worth of shares. They're going to cover up to $500,000 in value. That's a problem, which is why, in my opinion, it is important to diversify across firms. This is what I tell people all day. Get your Weeble account, get your free stocks, get your Charles Schwab account, get $101 for free. Get your $100 of Fidelity. I, I get a little bit angry when I talk about that. I'm not angry. I'm excited because when I tell people they're like 100 bucks, who needs that? Bro, there is no way that you make $100 in five minutes time, which is how long it takes for you to sign up to these accounts. So there will be a link 
in the description as well, if I'm not a lazy boy about it, as well as in the comment section for you to click that Weeble account. You do get to support the channel, support my Instagram page, my own journey, as well as get some free stocks for yourselves. You get paid to be safe. Okay, thank you. And one last thing that I want to say is be on the lookout for some epic drops in the stock market. Now, I don't know what the short-term future will hold. Uh, no one does. However, I do think that the probability of some big drops, and we're already seeing it now. Here's a here's a a finance stock, Bank of America, dropping all the way from forty six to thirty dollars. That is a pretty significant drop percentage wise. I'm not sure what that is uh, because I, I can't math that fast. But uh, fifteen bucks of about fifty. That is. Uh, that's I, I now I want to do the back. That's about a 30% drop right there. So be, you know, 30% is a lot for a single position or anything in general. Imagine having a hundred bucks and now it's 70. That is what just happened with Bank of America. Now we could look back where its old time high was about, I want to say $60 or so, maybe 55. And it dropped all the way to $6 and 58 cents back during the Great Recession. Can that happen again? Well, we learned our lesson last time, right? Banks will never fail again. We got institutions in place. We learned our lesson. We learned our lesson. We never learned our lesson. No, we did. Because people will be much more willing to buy this up um, on the way because they have experienced sharp drops and huge profit right after. I mean, literally doubling, more than doubling, almost tripling in just a year's time, and it's gone. And then it came back. Um, and then don't forget that Bank of America is a stock that pays out a 2.8% dividend if you lock it in today. If prices drop, that percentage yield will be much higher. So guys, I'm pointing out Bank of America as a stock, not so you go ahead and buy it, but just so you watch this finance sector. There could be a lot of um, artificial losers just because of the fear of this sector. A lot of money might be pouring out, and that could be a good time to pour your money in. Uh, again, not financial advice. Uh, I personally do hold about $5 of Bank of America, but I have indirect exposure through index funds. So with that, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, join the community, and I will see you guys in the next one. Much love.